Hey guys, this is Forsaken Reality here with the 22nd episode of the RPG tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be finishing our equipment system and uh, we're going to be importing another animation from Mixamo using the tool we used in the sixth episode. So if you're not familiar with that, you want to go back and grab the, that tool from that episode and make sure you figure out how to use it. It's a, six, it's a very short episode. So it doesn't take that much to use and I'll also show you the specific settings within this video so you won't need to go back and open up and look for those yourself. But I'll also show you where they are for the future. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first thing we're going to do is grab that animation from Mixamo. So you want to go to the Mixamo site and the animations, and you want to log in. And once you're logged in, you you want to, if you don't have this uh, mannequin already, you want to go back to the video where I show you how to set this up, and it's only, it's only a really short one, so it'll only be a few minutes. And then come back to this one. Uh, you want to search for the, you just want to search Quip. And we're going to grab this animation right here. And we're going to get it without skin. And uniform, I believe. If you go into your tool for the Mixamo converter, you can actually go to how to use and then click the this icon. And it will give you all the information you need. So without skin and uniform. And then you just want to, okay, let's write and then download. And you want to run it through this tool like we did in our previous videos. I already have it done, so I'm going, just not going to do that, that part. Once you have the animation all converted to um, UE4 mannequin, you want to go into your complete folder and grab that anim animation, and we'll put that in our sword animations folder, just right here in the se sequences. So quick weapon, and we'll select our skeleton, our UE4 skeleton, and you want to make sure your settings are set like this. Um, in, in the folder, there's also that this picture is also available in the folder right here. Close out of that. Once you set that all up, you want to just click import. And we should have the animation and everything should look fine with it. So that's the equipped to the back. And now we want to right click or we'll just uh, create an animontage. Equipped weapons back montage. And then we'll create a second animontage called unequipped. And for this animation, we'll just open it up and put minus one. So that it plays backwards. So that's him putting it back onto his back versus unequipping it. Um, we also want to open up our animation and select the salt, select, set the slot to upper body, and save that. And when we reopen it, it will be working again. So don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to search equip and I'm going to grab both my equip montages and I'm going to put them in my sword animations montage folder so I can access them easier. So equip needs to be also set to upper body so that we can play this animation while we're walking and stuff. And it, and it won't just play the animations frozen leg animations. So you want to, I'm just going to save all, they need to really do that. So now that we have our animation in, we want to go to our 
Hmm. Blueprints. And I believe in our data folder. Our structures and in animation details. We already had we already set up the equip and unequip montages. If you didn't, you can set those up now. You just click add new variable, search for anim montage and put the name of it in. And then go to your data table or not your data table. Sorry, your uh, item details and you want to add or that, that should be already in there because we have the animations for other things. But when you go into to your uh, item list here, now in your animation details for each weapon, you'll have the equip, unequip montage, and you just want to set this, and this will give you as allow you to set your equip and unequip montages for each of your um, weapons. So in case you have like different equip animations. So let's set these for the two that I have right there. And uh, we actually want to go back into our montages for our equip. We will create a new notify called equip. So you want to, oops, you want to right click, add notify, new notify, just type equip. And this is going to play right at the moment that your hand is releasing the weapon, basically. So, we're grabbing the weapon in the equip. So, right. Right here somewhere. We'll play the equip notify. And we'll go to our unequip. And in here we will right click, add new notify. We'll call this one unequip. And somewhere around here by the looks of it and we'll also want to get our add notify stop animation and add notify yeah the stop animation and we'll put that Uh, for the unequip, we actually want it this way because our animation's playing backwards. So, put that right there. And now we want to go into our animation blueprint, notify graph, and Search for equip, and we'll call the event equip, and unequip. And from here, we want to drag out. Or first, we need to get our character reference. Drag out combat component. This is where we set up our equip and unequip. And this is at the moment that we're going to run this equip function from our combat component, which from what we did last time, we'll go to components just so I can show you that when we equip, 
all this is doing is attaching it to the hand socket set in the weapon and rotating it to the rotation set in the weapon and zero is default and setting a weapon to being equipped we also want to set our stance when we equip the weapon so we will drag out and get her character reference again to make it a little neater and get our character component stance and we'll set stance and uh well actually i'm gonna move i keep this drag i'm gonna drag this over like this make a little room out of my character reference i want to get my old wall ref or our uh get held item and i don't know if all of you guys changed this last time i'm just gonna i'm starting to change it back hold to uh hold the little ref so it makes more sense if the master holdable and that should change the name of that and from our so we need to get our stance depending on the weapon that's being equipped so we want to get our item details from the weapon equipped and we want to break this now we get us our structure. And from there we can grab our stance and plug it in like that. Trying to figure out a way it would be the neatest way of doing this. Or comment this set stance. From in list. So that's basically setting the stance depending on whatever weapon you have whatever is set in your weapon here. And this is for the equipped. And we'll take get rid of this bubble. And now for the unequipped. We want to get our combat component. I'm just going to copy this right here and paste it. And can search for unequipped, which is our in our combat component, which will search for fix this up quickly which will check if the back socket is not set so if you do, it's not going to be a back socket item if it's not a back socket item then it will attach to or yeah if it equals none so it's looking to see if it equals none so basically if it if it's set if you have it set then it will run and attach to the back socket and if it's not set set or if it's not equal to none, then it will attach to... Okay, I got this. Yeah, it'll attach to the waste socket. Just making sure I don't have this backwards. So if your back socket is none, it's true it'll attach to your back socket. So these are actually backwards. I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, these are actually backwards. So you want to break this, these two by holding control and clicking. I'm just gonna drag this down below like this. It's a good thing I caught that there because that would have been some more debugging later. And basically I'm gonna delete this little connection pin and connect true to the waist. So basically if the back socket equals none, which means there's no back socket set, it will set the waist for now for the weapon. 
And if there is a back socket set up, it will attach. If it doesn't equal none, which means there is a back socket set up, it will attach to the back. Sorry about that little bit of confusion there. So basically we connect the unequipped in our animation blueprint. Now that we have that fixed. And that'll be unequipped. And uh, we want to get our character component again. So let's get the character reference. Character component. And set stance. And this, we're just going to have it unequipped because we're unequipping the weapon at this point. Put us in our uh, normal idle stance for when we don't have any weapons. And now we want to... Actually, yeah, we want to go into our master character. And I'm just going to put this down under the pickup item. Or first we're going to go to our... Edit, and in here we're going to go to our project settings, and input, we're going to add a new input called, uh, equip weapon. This is just going to be, um, I'm going to use the input E. And I'm just going to change this to equip slash. Equip. Or actually, let's keep it equipped for now. And uh, then we want to search equip. And then we'll get our input action for our equip weapon. And... I'm actually going to rename that to just... Deadly just equip. So now we have our equip vent. And from here, first thing we're going to do is check to see if our holdable is valid, so it won't run through any further if we're not even holding an item. And then we're going to check if our weapon is equipped, because depending on if it's equipped or unequipped, we will do so we will be slotting into our back or our hand. So we want to get our combat component, search for weapon equipped. And we'll create a branch so we can check if this is equipped or not equipped. And if it is equipped, we will play the server montage, play montage. The replicated event we created, and for the mesh will be player mesh and the montage to play. We will get our holdable reference item details. And we'll break this. So we'll give our item details, and from him, from here, we want to get our animation details, which is where we stored our equip and unequip animations, which are set in the data table per item. So for this, we are going to be, if it's true, we are going to run the unequipped animation. So we have a weapon equipped, it's going to unequip it. 
play rate's going to be one. And if it's false, we're going to copy all this. Just paste it right below. Let this out some, give us some room. I'll plug this in like this, but rather than the equipped, unequipped animation, we'll play the equipped animation so there isn't a weapon equipped, but the weapon is valid. Then we will play the equipped animation. Unequip montage, and I will uncheck that box and equip montage, and uncheck that box as well. And check if the weapon is currently equipped, would mean that it's in your hand. And Basically, if it's, any slot, if it's in any slot, it will, this reference will come back true. Okay, so now that we have this set up, I'm just going to test and see how it works from there. See what we need to do. There may be some little adjustments with the socket locations. So let's test it out and press B. B. Okay, so there's an issue with this animation. It's not playing it properly at the right speed. One second. All right, so I managed to find that issue with our uh, animations not playing properly. So it has to do with the way we made our montage. So basically we want to go into our data table anywhere, any item we put the unequipped animation we just want to clear that. Save. So, and then we want to delete this unequipped back animation. The equipped is fine. And then we want to search for our equip weapon back. And we want to duplicate our sequence and not our montage, not make two montages from one sequence. So equip weapon back and unequip. On a quick weapon back. So now we have a sequence that we set to negative one versus the montage. So that when we create a montage of that, it's playing forward again, but it's also playing the backwards animation. If that makes sense. This is the backwards animation. And in here, you want to add a notify. This is our unequip notify. Let's put that like right there somewhere. Now the unequipped. We want to set our animate our new animation in our data table to the unequipped. And now when we unequipped, we'll attach it to the socket. Obviously it's not in the correct location. You need to set the rotation. But with the axe here, I think it might be a little bit better and easier to do, yeah. So there's the axe. And to adjust the snapping, we'll search slow-mo point one. See exactly what's going on here. I think it's just going in the, the hands, not making it all the way to the socket. 
Yeah. So the socket's right there and the hand's above it. So I'm thinking for now, since we don't have proper animations, you can either adjust the arm by using uh, it's a little, little harder. I might show you that later in, a, in another video all on its own. But for now, you can go into your skeleton, character skeleton, and we can just grab our back socket, slightly bring it up a bit. But it's making its way just trying to figure out what angle it's going in I think it's going away from the skeleton farther you can mess with this and get the adjustments correct yourself depending on what weapons you're using but that's <clears throat> but that's about it for the equip and unequipped and if you notice, we can also for our new unequipped animation, you want to make sure you set the upper body slot. So that allow us that to not happen. What well, now you'll notice legs walk continue walking with it. And there's a little skip in that in the leg movement. That's actually because of the uh, blend space we're using. I'll adjust that so that it's more like the run. You notice the run is more persistent. I'll I'll redo the bun space in a future video, which is basically just combining the walk and the run into one bun space rather than it being split up because it's the jump between the run and the uh, basically what's causing the problem is in our anim graph. It's going between hair and hair, or uh, it's going between the two stances, basically. I think that might actually be more so to do with this walking stance and this stance right here. Either way, I'll fix that in, in, in a future video. I have it fixed in. I know I fixed it in another project, but that requires a little bit of extra work and it will extend this video far beyond what it should be. Um, that should be it for this video. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave those down below or join my Discord. There's a pretty helpful group in our Discord chat. So, and I will see you guys in the next episode.